Now, just as there are many ways to store information in computer science, there are even more ways of searching through lists. Searching algorithms at their core are ways in which we can look through a list of values stored in an array, say a patient name list or a high score list and find a particular piece of data. The goal of searching algorithm is to simply give the algorithm a string or object you want to find you want it to find is to simply give the algorithm a string or object you want it to find and return the index of the array that contains the string or object as fast as possible. Now this may seem simple, but lots of software runs on the backbone of being able to search through lists extremely quickly, making searching algorithms and in particular efficient searching algorithms an important topic to cover. Additionally, this is the main functionality that arrays are used for and is the backbone of many of the methods used with array lists, as well as many other storage methods, so knowing them will take you a very long way. Typically, searching algorithms are used to return the index of a particular data point so that it can be used, modified, updated or checked on. For example, if you are about to check into a hospital run on array system for patients, the staff must search for your name in the database and by returning the index of where your name is, they now have a quantifiable number that they can use to easily check you in, rent out prescriptions, schedule for your checkups, update your personal information, etc. Without having to search through the list for your name every time. You may think that there is little difference between searching algorithms since computers nowadays can perform millions of calculations per second, but when you are a huge multi-billion dollar corporation trying to find a certain data point in a list containing thousands or even millions of, of data points, small differences in efficiency are going to make or break the user experience. Even a 1% improvement in efficiency can mean big differences in the amount of time a user is waiting for a simple task. Now before we jump into different types of searching algorithms, we must discern between the two states that arrays or lists can be in, either sorted or unsorted. A sorted list of information is characterized by some sort of rankable value, whether that be a patient, ID, credit card number, or even by alphabetical values like usernames or legal names. An unsorted list is just some random assortment of related information not sorted by any particular order or reason. Some searching algorithms only work for sorted lists, usually the more efficient ones. Some work for both sorted and unsorted lists, although these are usually less efficient if you end up pursuing computer science further, you will have to deal with both sorted and unsorted lists. So it's good to know common searching practices for both. Another thing to note is that we determine the efficiency of a searching algorithm based on both the worst case scenario and the average number of items it must search. Another thing to note is that we determine the efficiency of a searching algorithm based on both the worst case scenario and the average number of items it must search. We call this big O notation, which each searching algorithm has an equation which takes in the size of the array as an integer n and will output a worst case scenario efficiency value that we can use to compare without other searching algorithms. We can then also look at we can then also look at how long, on average, it takes to find an element in a list. Using these two methods allows us to easily compare how efficient two algorithms are. Alright, now that we have got some background on searching, let's hop right into it. The first type of search we will be talking about is called a linear search. And you have honestly probably used this multiple times throughout your life. Every time. You have to search for your name on a list of people 
you probably follow the same pattern. You start at the top, check to see if the first name on the list is yours. If it is, great. If not, you move on to the next name onto the list until either you find your name or you don't, in which case you leave. A linear search works the same way. You start with the first element in the list, compare it to the value that you are trying to find and if they are the same, you have found your match and return the index of that element. And if not, you move on to the next element in the list until you either find the thing you are searching for or you run out of the list to check. Seems pretty simple, right? This is because linear searches are pretty bad when it comes to efficiency, especially in the worst case scenario. If the item you are searching for in the list is the last element, you are going to have to check the entire list of items before you find the one you are searching for. On average, however, you are going to get it above halfway through the list. That makes the linear search worst case scenario, since in the worst possible case, it will take the entire length of the array or n to find the correct value. The linear search on average will return the correct index in O parentheses n cross 2 of or halfway through the list. The linear search is great, however, since it can work with both sorted and unsorted lists because of the fact that will eventually cover every element in the list, the auto search we will cover requires the list to be sorted which may seem like a drawback but having a sorted list allows you to use algorithms that are far more efficient than the linear search. So overall the linear search is a good basic searching platform for you if you have an unsorted list but if your list is sorted there are more efficient options out there for you such as the binary search we will be talking about now. The binary search uses a recursive process to break the data in your list down to more and more manageable bytes, taking advantage on the fact that it's sorted in order to find the item you are looking for faster. This one is much more harder to wrap your head around, so let's start with an example. Let's say you have a list of 10 names sorted alphabetically, like shown on the screen now. Wanted to find your name within the list. Binary search, you will first look for the middlemost name, in this case, the one at the fourth index. Just a quick aside, since there is no true middle, the computer automatically uses the next one down as the middle value. Now, once you find your middle value, you first check to see if the name you are searching for at the index you have chosen. If it is, you simply return that index, but 99.9 percent of the time it's not including right now. So let's keep going. If the value at the middle index is not equal to the one you are searching for, you check to see if the value you are searching comes before or after the middle index. For example, if you were looking for the name Brandon and if the value at the middle index was called, Brandon obviously comes before Matthew alphabetically. And since we know the list is sorted, what we can do now is ignore the entire bottom half of the list and just focus on the top. Since we know that if Brandon is even in the list, it's going to be on that top half. Now we simply treat the top half of the list as an entirely new entity and repeat the process over again. Again, we will find the middlemost element on this new list of names and again compare it to the name we are trying to find. We return that index, but if we not compare to see if, if it comes before or after the middle index. Going back to our example, example, let's say the middle name of this new list is AJ. Now we know that Brandon comes after AJ alphabetically. So we can now ignore the top half of the list as we know that Brandon is going to be in the top of our list. Now we repeat this process again and again until we find the name we are looking for. For our example, the middle index this time is Brandon and that's what we are searching for. So we finally will return index 2. In binary search, eventually the index we compare to our search term will be the same at once it is 
we can return to index and move on. Now if we don't find it, which happens after we have eliminated the entirety of the list without finding our search term, the algorithm will simply return a null, a null value to let you know that the item you are searching for cannot be found on the list. The binary search is way faster and more efficient than the linear search since we are drastically cutting down the amount of elements we have to look at, making the program run faster. Almost 99.9% .9 of cases in which your list is sorted, the binary search is going to return a result faster than the linear search. So if you have a sorted list, your best option is to go binary. As for efficiency, the binary search is O log n. For worst case scenario, which can be confusing if you don't fully understand logarithms, but all you need to know that it is more efficient than the linear search, its average scenario is actually also O log n as well, which again is infinity times more efficient than linear. Now, while there are other types of searching algorithms you can use, these two are the most common for both unsorted and sorted lists. So we will stop there for now.